The reason you're stuck in the areas that you're stuck right now is due to an old system, an old software that you just bought. This is the software. It's like saying, you know, my original computer is the computer I'm going to use for the rest of my life. Welcome to the Have It All podcast. I'm Elon Ferdman, and along with my brother Guy, we're Satori Prime. We've spent the last 16 years on a quest of mastery, and not just in business, all areas. Mastery of our finances, our bodies, our relationships, and most importantly, our minds. You see, while most people fantasize about their dream life, we went out and created it. And you bet we learned a few things along the way. So if you want to gain new skills and tools that will help you achieve the life of your dreams, well, you've come to the right place. So get ready to have your mind expanded. Implement what you learn here today and you'll start living the life of your dreams instead of just, well, dreaming about it. So are you ready to have it all? Let's go. One of the things that I think you guys should know by now, but if you don't, it's just worth repeating before we go into this conversation that... Guy and I believe that there is no truth. There is no one thing. There is what works for you for now, right? And if you look at your life, you'll probably notice that things that you believed in wholeheartedly, like this is it, right? Five years ago or 10 years ago today, if I asked you that same question or how you view life, you view things a little differently, right? Because different conversations, different experiences. You may move places, you may have changed jobs, you may have become a parent or become divorced. And all of these things shift the way you view life. So one of the things I want you to start becoming witness to, okay, is the stories that you make about life. Most of these aren't even your stories. So I don't know if you guys saw, I shared an awesome video. It's just so good. I think we're going to show it at the live event because it just, it blew my mind. Did you see the one with the, with the girl at the doctor's office? Yeah. The sheeple one. The sheeple one. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, you can go to my page or share it. But the, the gist of it is, um, it's a staged experiment, a psychology, a psychological experiment. And one of the girls walks into a doctor's office. Everyone else there is staged. And there's a buzzing, like a beep sound every X so often. And everyone in the waiting room stands during this beep. And after about, I think it was three, maybe four at most beeps, this girl who has no idea why people are standing, who has no clue what is happening other than she's the only one not standing, gets up and stands with them. Never asks why, nothing, just does it. And then slowly they keep testing like, if they are gonna be less and less people, is she still gonna stand? Mm-hmm. Eventually she's the only one in the room and she still stands. Then new people come in who are not stage actors, these are actual participants in the psychological experiment. And they wanted to see if she would still stand with new people. And sure enough, she maintains standing. And sure enough, the other people that walk in within two or three beeps also start standing. The one guy asks her, he's like, why are you standing? And to which she replies, I'm not sure, but everyone else was standing when this thing beeped. And I was just like, wow, are you kidding me? So one of the things, it was interesting, just like a side note, I was like, I wonder if we did the same experiment with entrepreneurs, if it would go the same way. And my hunch is not, because my hunch- Would you have stood? I would not have stood. I think think with with pressure, you would, I think almost everybody would stand. So here's here's what I think my reaction, and, and you watch it, you kind of play this out with your head, right? So at first I was like, no way, I would never stay. And then I was like, I probably maybe would. Then I was like, I think realistically what would happen is they would sit down and I'd be like, why are you guys standing when it beeps? And then they would be like, I don't know, because that's what we're doing. I'd be like, you're all a bunch of morons, <laughs> right? Because to me, 
this is like a little off topic, but to me, this is what I want to talk to you guys about today. There are so many rules in life that people just follow blindly. And when you ask them why, they have no idea why. They do it because they saw other people doing it. They do it because a lot of people are doing it. They never stop to question like, is this something that feels good to me? Is this something that fulfills me? Is this something that moves my life forward? They just blindly do it. And that, my friends, is what I want to talk to you about today. So these are just, okay, let, let's back up a step. How do these things come about? It come about because we pass on stories, right? Like our language is what fuels our lives. We've spoken about this before. You were born into a family. It might be one that you deem good. It might be one that you deem bad. That doesn't matter. But the bottom line is you modeled your life and shaped your life around what you saw and the conversations you heard. That's from your family, from your siblings. It could be from your teachers. It could be from your religious leaders. All of these things have been programmed into your mind. Now, strangely enough, or not strangely at all, is the fact that you then cluster yourself in life with people that view life in a very similar fashion. By, de by design, mind you. Exactly. Yep. This is what this, all these rules are designed to do, right? Like, think about rules. We're good, they're bad. This belief good, that belief bad. And all of a sudden you have segregation, right? Now, once you segregate, you have to make your thing more important than their thing. That's the only way to keep segregation in place. That's the only way to keep your small, comp, you know, your small circle in place. And you end up taking on these bullshit cultural rules and conversations. And I don't know if you guys remember in session one, I was talking about fringe dwellers. We're the people that like, while everyone else is in this bubble of this is how life is, we're here somewhere in this weird place that others like, what are they doing out there? Why are they even out there? They should be here. Like, this is where everybody is. What are they doing there? And so when you ask me like, why? I, that's what I think I would have done. I would have just, as a fringe dweller, I think that the right, well, not the right thing, but what I would have done is asked. And if it would have been like, you know, cause religion is very similar. It's like people, I'm like certain people in Judaism will choose to eat kosher when they're at home, but not kosher when they go out. And I'm like, well, why do you keep kosher? And they're like, I don't know. Cause that's what my parents did. I'm like, and that's, fucking <laughs> that's that's like so dumb you, you you don't even know why you're doing it so when we're this whole having it all thing like our coaching everything that we do is based around upgrading these conversations upgrading and seeing that this comes from nonsense or at the very least allow you to open your eyes enough to start questioning some of these things, right? I'm not saying judge one better than the other. I'm just saying maybe, maybe it's time to evaluate some of the things that you bought hook, line, and sinker because everyone around you bought them hook, line, and sinker. And so one of the things that you want to look at is anytime there is some sort of conversation that says something along the lines of this is better than that thing, our thinking is better than that thing, this race is better than that race, this sex is better than that sex, people that go to college are better than these people, any, any of these things that we buy right? Media sells it to us. Uh, marketing sells it to us. I mean, it's like, it's, it's all just programming. And it's a very, very dangerous world to live in. Because here's the bottom line. If you follow these rules, that by the way, were made up by someone 
no smarter than you. In most cases, way dumber than you. Because they were made up, some of them eons ago, okay? And they worked for the time that they were effective then, right? Like, if you think about, I don't know how many of you guys are parents, but I'm, I can tell you with certainty, as amazing as my parents were, the research and information about raising a child today was not available to people even 20 or 30 years ago. And so when you're raising your children based off of how your parents raised you or how your grandparents raised your parents or how you saw children being raised, you're all, I'm telling you right now, you're already putting your children at a disadvantage because there are way more effective ways to do everything today, right? Think about this phone, this device. In the last, I don't know, when did the iPhone come out? 2008. Really? 2008? Uh -huh. It's been eight years? It's been eight years, yeah. No way. Definitely, 100%. Wow. It's like eight years right now, what's September? Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, serious. I, I, honestly, if you would have asked me, I would have been like at least 12 years. Yeah, you know what? It'll be more believable if I do this. It's been eight years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We have come a long way in eight yeah. years. Wow. Yeah. I've had eight smartphones. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know if you've had eight, but you've probably had like six to seven. Wow. Because the first, because it was two years plus, I mean, AT&T had a lock on, whatever. It doesn't matter. Wow. Eight years. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> any of it. Imagine if you had to go back to using an eight-year-old smartphone today. Like eight years. I'm not talking about 20-year phone or the first cell phone that, you know, like eight years ago, it would be unusable to you today. Just absolutely, like you would throw it against the wall so fast and hard because it would just be the, it's a paperweight today. <laughs> and that's eight years ago, Okay. I don't know how old some of you guys are, but whether you're 30, 40, 50, or 60, you have operating systems in your head that are powering your life that aren't eight years old, my friends. They might be 40 or 50 years old. It's, it's time to update. It's time to dump the software that no longer works and serves you for what it is that you're up to. And the conversation we're going to have today is how do you figure out what those conversations are? How do you then, once you understand them, how do you go and upgrade those conversations? Because the reason you're stuck in the areas that you're stuck right now is due to an old system an old software that you just bought, this is the software. It's like saying, you know, my original computer is the computer I'm gonna use for the rest of my life. And that's kind of what we're doing mm -hmm. in a lot of different areas. So any, th does that make sense, guys? This is, I mean, this is one of those things, like when you get that these operating systems are running you, your brain is a supercomputer. The most amazing thing is you can up, upgrade these things like this when you know how, but otherwise it just runs. And it just runs that old, stupid, slow ass pattern. And you're like, why isn't shit working? You're like a professional, uh, I guess I could do it too. I don't know, it seemed to me like you were doing that some really nice tech that I was like, how can I do it that fast? But I <laughs> yeah. um, great, so you know, for those of you guys who were here last week, we created this context of what happened in story, right? Like what happened in the interpretation you created, give you my, my story and how that worked on me and what that gave me access to. This is all the work, all the work in terms of conscious and conscious cognitive neurocognitive ability to look at something comes from creating distinctions, right? If something is not distinct to you, you are literally not aware of it in your consciousness. Something that doesn't have a word for you, even if you saw it, you wouldn't really even see it. Things literally come into consciousness when we have words to call it. So when you have collapsed, things collapsed in different areas, two things that should be distinct 
in reality actually look as if they're one. And that's why when we say what happened in story, it's like you can't see the difference between the thing that you made up and the way what actually happened in reality. And because of that, you live the unreality. So we kind of want to take another slice at it, right? By, by doing this. And the way that we do that is through looking at the, uh, so I don't even mind saying it, Elon and I are, are right now reading a book by the creator of, um, is it Mind Valley? Mind Valley. Mind Valley. Do you guys know Mind Valley? So they're a development company that have like million members, amazing company, like a shining example of like uh, integrity type of online marketing. And the guy who wrote the book clearly has done a lot of similar work to us. And he has this distinction he calls rules, right? Like B rules. And it basically just means like the bullshit rules, basically what Elon's talking about. So like things that you've just ingested, taken them. It's actually not his, rules aren't his thing. He uh, stole that from the guy from um, uh, that blog, the famous blog, what, uh, what, it, what if? No, but. Doesn't matter. Every, yeah. everybody, everybody's stealing everything. Nobody, yeah. has, nobody has original thoughts. These, these are just, uh, you know, re-analogized type of thoughts. But I like it, rules, it's easy to remember. So it's like yeah. bullshit rules, and it's a lot of what Elon said right now. Now these rules were given to you at, sp at a specific age, whether you remember it or not, okay? So you could say that the, these rules were given to like a five-year-old, a three-year-old, a seven-year-old, and that rule applies to that age. And you believed that rule without really inquiring as to whether or not that actually works for you, okay? And this is where people find themselves in these kind of debates all the time as to like, they have displeasure in their life. You inquire as to where the displeasure is coming from. They have this rule. They tell you the rule or they act out the rule and you go, well, why are you doing that? They go, well, that's the way it is. So one of the ways to distinguish this is by starting to distinguish the age of these conversations, right? So I go, gave you guys my story about depression and suicide and all these different kinds of things like that conversation started at 12 years old and I'm sure it started even before then it was it clearly like catalyzed during that time but it started way before that so we could say that something probably happened and I remember like what I remember when I was young is being very protective specifically of my mother and I remember like if my dad said something or like I actually my our moms are like a very good looking woman and at, at a young age I remember like uh guys catcalling her in the streets. I don't know if you remember that, like in Israel. I do. And I remember like how agitated that made me. And some, something got formulated about the way men are and the way women are during that time period in my life. And I actually think that that's what led to a lot of these like, like protective anger things that I used to do. Um, so whatever that conversation was, the age of that conversation is like four years old. Now, you know, fast forward into my 20s, I'm in a relationship. And I start feeling that way, like a woman needs protection or that there's like something unsafe. Guess what I do? I act out that thing out. So when you start distinguishing the age of your conversations, a way to like re remind yourself when things aren't working is that there's a young conversation here at play. And another way of saying it is you haven't upgraded your software yet. You're basically running old software and trying to get new results with that software. And you're just sitting there going like, huh, can't get the results I want. It's like, okay, well that software was programmed not to get those results. So another way to think about it is, you know, if something's not working for you and let, let's say you distinguish that whatever conversation you're having started at five years old, it's like, here you are in this situation. And it's like, you turn to a five-year-old version of yourself that's standing right next to you and saying, Hey, what do I make that mean? And the five-year-old's like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. and you go, Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me play that out and see how that goes. Funny thing is you already know how that's going to play out. Now, how many of you guys when making life decisions inquire or go ask a five-year-old to tell you how to, what action you're supposed to take or who you're going to become or who you should be. Does anybody actually do that? Raise your hands virtually, <laughs> right? I, I imagine you don't do that, right? However, I would challenge you to look that in your life, you, that's exactly what you're doing. So where you're stuck around your finances, where you're stuck in your relationships, where you're stuck in your health, where you're stuck in your love life, where you're stuck in the amount of joy that you have. These are all rules, old rules, old programming, certain ages of conversations that you've been carrying around with you. Like, uh, you know, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Like a burlap sack <laughs> filled with rules that every time something doesn't work, you're like, 
look at all my rules and you're so proud of them except that they're not working for you. So the first thing to note is that whatever, your, whatever results you currently have in your life is an indication of the rules that are running your life. Elon and I have a saying, you're always winning the games you're playing. You're always winning the games you're playing. Where your relationships are failing, where money's not working, that's your game, believe it or not. And, and it's, it's not so much your game, it's your identity's game being played out over and over again. You're at the effect of it because you might not be conscious of where the identity is taken over and where you're having no say. So what we're looking for, again, is to create distinctions like the age of your conversation so that you can clearly see between where you're at choice and where you stop choosing at all and you start deciding over how things are. Because those rules are some decision that somebody made a long time ago, whether it was yourself or it was given to you through a family or societal conversation. And a decision, as you guys know, like Elon and I are, have studied language for a long time, when you look at the word decide, it ends in C-I-D-E, the suffix, and that shares its lineage with words like suicide, homicide, genocide, pesticide, right? So side, C-I-D-E, literally means to kill off. So if you think about that, right? So when you decide something, what you're doing is you're killing off, and specifically where you're killing off is other possibilities. So every time you create a rule, every time there's an age of conversation that gets implanted in you, what you basically said is this is the way it is, you believe it so much, and that makes it so that nothing else is really possible for you. So what we wanna do is we wanna uncover the rules that you have, and we wanna look at, could you see that if you gave that up and dismantled it, that something would become available to you? So before we continue, are you guys all mapping yourself onto this? Do you understand what we mean with age of conversation, with uh, inquiring into what it is? And can any of you guys, you know, can you easily think around the specific area of your life that you wrote down, how far back can you remember feeling a certain way or taking specific actions that have consistently led to some kind of a result? That's an unwanted result. Can, that, can, it, can anybody clearly think of that? And can anybody not clearly think of one? Do the thinking, guys. This is important. And then we're just looking for like yeses and no's in the box. We're not like looking for you to. Okay, so mean yes and yes, no specific date or time, as memories are blur, and, and all memories are blurs. Even the things that you're so sure of are just memories that are really blurry. Sometimes people remember things, but it's not their own memories. Like their parents told you, oh, when you were young, you were so cute. There was this one time you were yeah. in the park and you had a green jacket on and you like ran over to us and we got hit by a baseball bat. And you're like, oh, I got hit by a baseball bat. I remember that song. <laughs> and you don't remember any of it. Which is you, somebody told you that and you've created a figment of your imagination around it. You freeze or what happened? Who, me? No. I'm just, I'm just waiting for people to write something Okay. for a minute. All right, so I guess Nina's the only one with a working memory currently. Everyone else, we're going to give you some new tropics at the end of today to get you <laughs> up again. All right, cool. Got it. All right, so look, wherever you are with it is fine. What we're, what we're in is an inquiry, okay? It's really important that when you come to these things, you come to any training program. When you're an entrepreneur, it's the same thing. We tell people the same stuff all the time. By the way, I just realized we're both wearing striped shirts. Nice job. Nice. Um, um, you know, it's really important that you're, you leave yourself in a state of inquiry. And I'm going to segue into this in a minute. You leave yourself in a state of inquiry. The right answer is not important. It is not. Because whatever it is that you surmise today, tomorrow is already going to stop serving you. It's a limitation. It's only as far as you've gotten an inquiry. So we say that, you know, today's uh, breakthrough is tomorrow, tomorrow's ego trip it'll just become part of your identity again. And all you'll do with your breakthrough is make everything that's not the breakthrough wrong, which is not a breakthrough. <laughs> so again, whether it's right now on the webinar, although I, I would ask you to keep listening versus doing this, but when you get off the webinar, I would specifically look at the area of life that's not working for you. And just like last, last time, I would start going back through the memory and whatever is most recent for you that you can remember clearly I would use that and then see if you can go a little bit farther back because you know, if something happened to you when you're 17 and there was some like blow up with a human being, I promise you the way that you were being didn't start at 17. That started 10, 12, 13 years before that also. 
okay? Even if you can't remember it, it really doesn't matter. It's more about seeing the pattern more than anything. Again, seeing the originating uh, event, while it might be cathartic in nature, and even give you access to something, ultimately the breakthrough is not reliant on whether or not you find that memory. It really is not. So noticing the pattern is much more important, okay? And then, how many of you guys can see, again, that there's some age related to this conversation, and it's not, like, it's not an adult conversation, like this is a young conversation. Can you see that? And just write in the box yes or no if you can see that. And bro, while they're doing that, is there anything you want to share about all this? About age of conversation? Yeah, and w whether it's from your own life, something you want to share, or... Um, there are a lot of things. I'll tell you the one that's that for me most recently, and I, and I see like a lot of other people have it too. Um, we were immigrants, Guy and I, and we moved to this country. I was seven, almost eight years old. And while I never felt like we were poor per se, okay, I clearly knew that there were people, we went to school with very, very wealthy individuals for the first two years of our lives. While I didn't feel like we were poor, I obviously knew there's a whole other world. I remember walking this person's house. They lived in Alpine, which is like one of the most expensive areas in the country. Um, and they had a, I don't know if you remember, bro, where in their kitchen, you would actually walk through like a forest of sorts. There's like oh, a Karen's house. And Karen's house. house was like a Franklin jungle. Lakes. Franklin Lakes. Yeah. yeah, it was insane. It was insane. <laughs> and it was like the epitome of like 1980s, like luxury house. It was, I mean, it was ridiculous. And I remember the basement. Yeah. That huge with all like mirrors. And uh -huh. so anyway, I, while I never felt poor, I did see the, the thing that was impregnated in me and then guy, cause I know we had to go, kind of go through this ourselves is that in order to make money, you have to work really hard. You have to just grind it out and it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. And one of the biggest, biggest things to us was we as a family sucked, still suck, I think, at asking for help. Because when you're an immigrant, one of the things you realize is I'm on my own. We had no family here, no one to rely on, nothing. And so it's a very, very interesting conversation. And this is, I want to show you guys the duality of this stuff. Like everything is great in certain instances and horrible in other instances. So what happens when you don't ask for help? You naturally become very self-reliant. You become very independent, which means you figure shit out. You get stuff done. Like there's no... No cavalry is coming, no support, you know? So you just do stuff and you mess it up and you figure it out and you do it again and again. And all that stuff is incredible. I think it makes us so tenacious. And I, I think we're as successful as we are because of it. And the complete other side of that blade is that when you're trying to build something big, like our mission is 100 million people, guess what? These two morons are not doing it on their own. Just absolutely not. Like it is impossible for us to achieve this mission by trying to do things on our own. We have to ask for help. This is not our thing. This is an idea, a mission that needs to have an army of people in order to make it happen. And so if the conversation is that, and here's the twisted part, right? It's not just like, I, I won't ask for help. The way we as a family, our conversation, the way we justify not asking for help is when I ask people to do stuff, it's always worse than if I did it myself. It takes longer. It's a pain in the ass to explain it to them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which are all justifications, right? This is when I said before, like my, our thinking better than their thinking, the way we operate better than they, right? So we have to justify not asking for help. 
And that's how we justify. I also want you to kind of talk about, you know, the first two, two and a half years of our business versus the last three and the escalated growth because that's kind of how we started operating inside our business too. So talk a little bit about that because that, that's an example of actually like upgrading that conversation as making that not true and making something else more true. Yeah. So again, keep in mind, this is a conversation I'm giving you that started for me, say at roughly the age of eight years old. Okay. Meaning that say three years ago, I was 32. It was running my life for 24 years. And it would have continued to do so had we not been playing this Satori Prime game. And the reason I say that is because as we're growing this company, we kind of felt like we were running full steam ahead and we were dragging an anvil, like, like a anchor behind us. And it's like, we're going full steam and it's just not moving all that fast. And so these are the inquiries that we go into. It's what are the conversations in place right now? What are the beliefs that we have right now about us, about our business, about how things need to go, et cetera, et cetera. And this was one of the conversations that we had was we don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. And now when you realize that you have to go and reprogram this whole operating system, which yes, served us when we were immigrants and we actually had nobody to ask for help. But now we're in a business where we have a huge network of people, a huge following of people. Neen is one of, is a perfect example. Neen is someone that just started working with us recently because we finally gave up the fact that we need to do this all on our own. We finally realized that in order to make this thing move, we need help. And you know what you started doing? We just started asking. And it, what, what happens is really interesting with Neen specifically, we didn't even ask. Neen came and asked us. And I think that's a really interesting thing is because when you shift the energy, when we're like a no to anybody helping us, you're like, you're an F you. Once you give up that story, you've removed this huge block and this is what I don't know if you guys remember in the first one, I said like, what you are is a conduit for life. Like imagine a huge tube and everything wants to be there for you. But you stick all of these things in the way so things can't flow to you. You remove a block, whoosh, all this stuff shows up. Perfect people, perfect opportunities, more money. All of these things just show up. So... For us, for me personally, I'm sure Guy would agree, this was such a monumental shift in our business. So what Guy's talking about, like, for the first two and a half years, we did everything on our own. In fact, we structured a business by which other people could not support us. Like, that's how we built the business. Mm -hmm. So that even if someone came in and we're like, we can't even explain to you what it is that we're doing because we're doing so many things. Then we realized, okay, this is not working, okay? That conversation is young. If we want to really, really build this, we have to now upgrade that conversation. So what did we start buying into? We started buying into that we cannot absolutely do this on our own. We need to start building a team and support it and have people around us support this mission and move this thing forward because otherwise it's not going anywhere. We just, we just started seeing all the limitations of it, right? You know, it's, it's only, you only have so much time in a day. You can only take things so far. You can only uh, put your mental and emotional energy towards thing in such a capacity. You'd be shocked at what happens when you create space for stuff, right? Like Elon said, like things just are happening. I think you can argue either way. You're noticing coincidences, you, there's divine powers at work. I mean, whatever your interpretation is that empowers you, I personally don't care. I like the interpretation of like, I'm in co-creation with like God force energy or whatever, you know, universal energy, whatever you want to call it. And I, I want to give you an example. Like, so Saturday, and this, this is stuff I see happen all the time with people. It just blows my mind. It's just changing conversations to create space. And when there's space, things just seem to happen. So we're with my friend on Saturday doing this uh, exercise and she had a vision of, a, of like an, an experience of her while she was a baby looking up at her father and she just started bawling her eyes out like just weeping, mm -hmm. weeping, weeping like 
crazy, just like this crazy release. And she couldn't, she couldn't talk for like 45 minutes. When she finally got around to talking, um, it doesn't matter because I didn't say her name, but like she had the experience of her father being with her. And then like her father, like checking out, like checking out of like being present with her um, because he, whatever was happening in that circumstance. And she just like, this thing just clicked for her. And it was like her first traumatic experience that she can remember with her father. And this just came kind of like during that exercise. So she's crying, crying, crying. I feel like 45 minutes, she literally like went back into this like child state, released all this stuff. And this is just a different way of doing it. We were doing like a body exercise. So we go, when she starts explaining to me what happens, after like we were talking for like 10 minutes, she looks down at her phone and I see her kind of go like, like kind of like go like that. You know, when you get surprised with something on her phone, she puts her phone to her ear and she listens. And you literally see her go like this. And I'm like, what? She goes, my father called. I said, wow. okay. He go, she goes, he never leaves me a voicemail. And he just told me that he loves me. He doesn't, he always calls when he wants something. He doesn't want anything. He just wants to call to talk and say that he loves me. She goes, that never happens ever. So again, you could call that coincidence not, but like there was like a clear release of some kind of energy. I believe that two things can occupy the same space at the same time. If you want something in your life, whatever belief you have right now is in the way of that thing coming in because that belief is static in place. And until you're willing to let go of that for upgrade, that upgrade can't come into that space until you give that up. So it was just like this, and these kind of like magical happenings I will tell you, the more we do this kind of work, the more they just seem to happen. Like it has been, bad things really don't happen around Elon and I. Like we have a context that life is easy, it flows, things work around us, and they just do. And even in situations where things are like going wrong, we're just like, oh, the solution's coming anytime now. Or this is not what we thought it would be, like something better is coming along. And it always does, it always seems to work that way. Yeah. So it's just a, just a way to look at it. Okay. So I want to like fast forward this a little bit. So, so yeah. I, I think the, the question that uh, Matt posted is like, how do they remove these obstacles? And that's really what I want us to close this out with. Okay. Go ahead. So ultimately guys, look, the first step in everything is to distinguish the conversation. So the first thing you have to look at is if things aren't working in your life in any area, right? Like ours, the, the example I gave you was business, but guess what guys, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Guess where I wasn't asking for help. I wasn't asking for help in my marriage. I wasn't asking for help with my friends. I was just programmed not to ask for help. Now you can't, one of these, like one of the things you have to realize is this is not one of those, I snap my fingers and I become a different human being. You don't go from black to white. You don't go from 300 pounds to having six pack abs by going like this. Oh, I distinguish that. No, you bring awareness to this thing. This thing that has been running you now has a flashlight on it. And when it happens, you're like, oh, I'm doing the not asking for help thing again. Mm -hmm. And every time you catch yourself, what you're doing is, it's like you're exercising the muscle. Yeah. So one of the things that, the, the first step is distinguish the conversation, okay? And notice the age of that conversation. So for us, for example, the age of that conversation for me was eight years old. Now, as a 32 year old, I'm looking at this conversation, I'm going, okay, if I'm 32, and I know what it is that I know today with all the information I have today, not, not my past, not anything, but like where I am today, does that conversation of I can do it on my own, don't ask for help, whatever that you know, thing looks like, does that serve me and where I am going? And the answer at that point was clearly no, okay? You guys with me so far? So the next step is, okay, as a 32 year old, what would be the upgraded version of that operating system? What do I need to start programming in here to actually get me to where it is that I wanna go? 
said another way. So said another way is the, the, it, the young conversation is just a certain context of the way that life is. It's one possible way that life is. It is not the way that life is because life is kind of infinite, right? There's all ways and kind of like no ways all the time available to you. The upgraded conversation is like, what context could you create that empowers you, right? To take action. So when we say like empowered, it's like to put forward momentum in taking action in that area of your life. Because mostly where you're not getting what you want and results or some action that you're not taking. And there's some way that you're not being. The being usually comes before, well, the being always comes before the action. And that's what's happening there. So the, the context is how, how it is that you can be in that moment. And we're looking for an empowered context, right? So, you know, we're all mostly dealing with similar or same circumstances, right? So why is it that two people can look at the same circumstance and for one person, it's a huge problem. And mm-hmm. for the other person, it's like nothing at all. Or a huge opportunity. Or a huge opportunity. It, and it's like the circumstances don't matter. What you say about the circumstances matter. How you be about the circumstances matter. And how you act in the face of that circumstance is really what matters, right? And that's why we say there's really no right answer. It's what's your empowering context. So go ahead. Pick up from there. So that's basically how we did it, right? Looking at the age of the conversation, seeing that at that moment that no longer serves us, and then you create from nothing just create a conversation that will serve you because guys here's the bottom line you made up the shit before you're gonna make up the shit now make up shit that empowers you make up stuff that gets you excited and moves you forward and the second piece is that realize that it will not happen overnight mastery happens in increments, not in leaps. What you're doing in that moment is literally, this is what happens in your brain. You're literally taking neurons that have been fired together like this for, for, in my point, 24 years, okay? And you are just ripping them apart. And what you're trying to do is like, put them together in some other fashion that hopefully will serve you. But here's the cool part. If this doesn't serve you, you switch it and you do this. And if this doesn't serve you, you switch. it doesn't matter. You're making it up anyway. Once you make up that new conversation, that new story. So for us, we had to create an empowering context now around asking for help and hiring people. Right? And so the empowering context is something along the lines like we have 100 million people that we are trying to reach. There is no way we can do it alone. It will kill us to get there by ourselves. It's going to be way less fun anyway. So let's invite a whole bunch of amazing people and go on this absolutely amazing ride. And even if it takes us a little bit longer to explain to this person how to do this, the joy and fulfillment that that will bring to a much broader community is worth that conversation. All right, let me, let me just stop you yeah. really quick. So, so Matthew said, oof, it's a lot of processing. I'll watch the recording again and again. And I know whether you meant that in a joking fashion or serious way, look, even that, right? There's some conversation at work there about how long and how hard things take. Now, I agree with Elon, things uh, incrementally happen. However, I do believe in quantum leaping stuff also. It's almost like uh, you chip away at something and then it just like, boom, you have these big explosions and like insights. And there is major insights you can have. So I, the reason I would, I would at least coach you away from that kind of stuff because it immediately puts a huge barrier in terms of, man, this is a lot of work or it's going to take a lot of time or stuff like that. What we're talking about is not something that requires a lot of processing because the moment you raise consciousness, what you're basically saying is raising consciousness. Another way of saying it is I'm creating a distinction around something. So if you create a distinction around this, when I'm like this, I'm being a seven year old. Genuinely, I mean, I mean, mostly generally, people don't want to act like a seven-year-old when they're an adult, right? Being an adult is not something that happens to you. It's just another way of being. It's a possibility, and it shows up a certain way in society today, and we can always redefine what an adult means if we choose to. So doing this kind of work and where the insights really come is really just by, just by putting attention on things. And uh, one of my favorite analogies for breakthrough transformation is when you're driving a car, and you see a, like down the highway and you see it in a car you've never noticed before. And it's a beautiful car. And you think to yourself, man, that's a really good looking car. Or 
you decide for yourself, you know what, when I go get my next car, it's going to be that one. You go to bed that night, you wake up the next morning and what happens? That car is like all over the roads. You're like, whoa, 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 when did this car get here? Like, I just noticed it. Now it's everywhere, right? There's a phenomenon at play there. And all you did was create distinction, you know, Ben's E-Class or whatever it is, like Mercedes-Benz E-Class or whatever your favorite car is. Like you just created a distinction for that car and suddenly it just seems to appear everywhere. That's how this stuff works. The moment you create distinctions, you're basically giving your brain a new line of code and you're saying, pay attention. And now that new line of code, just like before you created some context, your brain starts looking for evidence to make that true. It's just how the programming works. And it starts creating rewiring to now make that new context true. But instead of having a context that came out of some moment of trauma where you decided the way that you are and the way that life is and the way that people are and you're against it and it's not working for you, the moment you create that distinction, what you notice, what most of you guys are probably noticing already is you have choice. You have a choice now. You can keep running the programming because it's something that you probably didn't see. It was like a blind spot for you. You're like, whoa, I am acting like a seven-year-old in my relationship because I remember when blah, blah, blah happened to me and this girl told me to go F myself, right? And you're like, whoa, I don't have to operate that way. And now what you're looking for is, okay, so if my new form of operation around women is that they, you know, uh, I'm heard, they love me and I'm appreciated. That could be like a way to upgrade the conversation around relationships, right? And now you start looking for people communicating to you that love, appreciate you, and all the other stuff that you created. And just starts creating new bonds in your brain like that until that's really what you eventually all you see. And that's, guys, it's such, it's so subtle. But if you don't inquire into why things in your life aren't working in a deep, meaningful way, then you just have a lot of reasons why it's not working and they're knee-jerk reactions to what's happening. You haven't really gone into depth. It, like before in this exercise, men, if you have a woman in your life, know that women generally like to share a lot about things. They call it like, it's like brain dumping for them and, or like a dump into a bucket, right? They don't necessarily mean what they're saying in that moment. You all know because you've gotten in trouble while you're trying to fix what they're saying, right? They just need opportunity to like dump their stuff out to like think things through. Women use 50,000 words a day on average. Men use 8,000 words a day on average. I'm not joking. Look it up. There's an amazing book called The Female Brain. And their communication centers, if ours is like a, if theirs is like an eight lane superhighway, ours is like a dirt country road, right? That's the difference in the brain of, because different things in the brain grow and shrink when testosterone washes over it at, at the prenatal stage. So my point is, is that if you were to keep asking your woman, well, why do you feel that way? Why is it like this? Why is it like that? Well, she's doing that. Instead of trying to fix it, after she peels away that onion, she's going to get to the core issue and have like this like aha moment. And you're actually going to hear what your wife, spouse, partner, et cetera, et cetera, is actually trying to communicate in that moment. Now that works for men too. Like when we do coaching with people, usually when we ask them, okay, like what's missing? The first thing they'll say to is like, here's how, what I'm going to do to fix it. And you're like, okay, well, if you already had that, then what's available to you? And then it's like, they tell you the next thing. Okay, well, if you had that, then what's the next thing that's available to you? And you just kind of keep going down this line of questioning. Think about how kids do it also. Why? 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 Right? Like they keep inquiring into it. And eventually they're like, there's some satisfaction there for them. But it's like, even you have to go like, well, why is it that way? Right? And you're inquiring. So you're like, you're in the state of inquiry together. And it's so important to be in that state of inquiry. And, <laughs> and, plus you, and know that wherever you get to next, there's just another why there for you. You just get as far as you can get. Now, wherever you are in life, there's a, there's a reason for it that works really well. And then there's a limitation, like a wall to that belief. What the inquiry allows you to do is to constantly look for the walls. How far does this take me out, right? So like Elon and I working in our business with the context of we can do everything, it doesn't mean that that's not functional. We built an amazing business around, shit, we can do everything. We're immigrants. We'll do this ourselves. And that has specific limitations in terms of how we can grow as a company. When we're willing to give up that conversation, inquire again, what else is available beyond that wall, this whole other world becomes available to us, right? So it's kind of the same thing here, right? And Michael's like, that drives me crazy about my girlfriend, right? Yeah, right? It's just, it's all about, but even that, right? So you have a certain conversation about what it means to listen to your girlfriend. And a lot of men have that conversation, like all women are crazy, right? That's just a, that's an old conversation. A crazy how? They're just different. You know, they just communicate differently. So when you study women, you realize they're completely com different communication patterns. 
And men, instead of inquiring into what's different, we go, oh, they're crazy. And that gives you an excuse not to really listen. And then you lose love in the relationship. And then you go, why isn't this working anymore? Right? Where you can create different contexts. So these are all the little shifts we can make. Uh, anything you want to add to that? No, I just want to kind of put a bow on this and say that once you distinguish and you upgrade, okay, the next job for you is very simple. Bring awareness time and time again to when this is happening because realize this conversation has been running the show for decades for most of you. You're twisting it and creating something new. That conversation needs to kind of plant its own roots in order to take hold. That means every time you catch the old conversation come up, say we're doing something and we think, you know what? It would be great to look for so-and-so. And the thing inside is going to go, no, they're not going to do it the same way. It's just going to be a waste of time and money, blah, 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 blah. That's when you go, no, I'm no longer listening to that eight-year-old conversation. I choose to, and you literally say the new thing. Mm -hmm. You could say it out loud. You can say it to yourself. You have to physically reprogram it every single time. So whatever your conversation is, every single time you hear the old one, you go, no more of that, here's the new one. No more of that, here's the new one. No more of that, here's the new one. And eventually the old one stops talking mm -hmm. because you've programmed a new system in place. And in that programming, guys, when I say new operating system, I mean this new operating system, you know when you went from, I don't know what your, how often you guys switch cell phones, but I just kind of like this analogy. You know when you go from a two-year-old phone to a new phone and you pick it up and you push some buttons and you go, holy shit. And then you go back to the other one and you just push a button and it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh, thank you. Everything is just slow and whatever. Eventually, it will become that way too. When you upgrade these conversations, your whole world changes. Opportunities are different. Different people show up. It all just starts flowing. And you're going to be standing there going, I can't believe this shit works that easily. And I'm telling you, it is that easy. Mm -hmm. It really, really is that easy. So in the, um, at the live event, and I want to just start segueing to that. At the live event, we're going to do exercises around upgrading these conversations. We're actually going to have you guys go through conversations that have been running the show and you're going to physically go and upgrade them. Yeah. We're going to show you basically like how to be a gardener, right? If you're a gardener and you're not being cognizant of your garden, you get weeds. Not because you want them there because they just sprout and grow naturally. And the things that we complain about, those are kind of like our weeds. Like that's a really good way of seeing where your weeds are. You mm -hmm. complain, you complain, those are weeds. This, what we're showing you is like, here's how you rip out the weed. I can't plant another seed where a weed is, right? I got to pull the plant out. So these new conversations are like you putting the new seed in the ground and then tending to them. But if you plant a new seed, you can't just be like, all right, straight, good luck. Like there needs to be some level of consciousness to look at it, water it, you know, fertilize it, all that kind of stuff. And that's properly gardening something new arising. And you're like, this is the same way. It's just noticing. So we're going to train you on how to quickly create these things. Like, and you can do it, you can, and the more you do it, you get really, really good at it. And where it starts looking at, instead of like looking at how do I fix things? I think for me, a better context is how do I perform better? Like, how do I increase my performance? Because all this stuff we talk about, ultimately is human performance. I wanna perform better in my relationship, I wanna perform mm -hmm. better in my business, perform better in my health. That you're performing at a certain level, but wherever you are, you're like, shit, I wanna be here, right? The reason Guy and Elon can make you know, a lot more money, it's just based on giving up conversations and performance is just based on the ability to take action. Except most of you guys have conversations and every time that conversation fires, every time that weed is there, you look at the weed and you go, well, now what? And then you don't do anything about the weed because you don't have a distinction around it. So it stops you from taking any action that would actually make a difference in terms of the performance. Once that weed is gone, it becomes very natural to take action consistent with that new way of being. And then you just find that like, whoa, the results are changing. And the more you do that, the more you start noticing how these like 
I don't want to call it strange alignments, but like these like universal alignments seem to empower and work with you. He does a really good job of explaining it in my, that Mind Valley book too. It's like, it's just a phenomenon that happens. It seems to happen to everybody. Once you start doing this kind of work, there is like, you feel lucky. It actually feels like luck, but it's just, it's like this integrity alignment that you start putting in place. And when you have integrity, things just start working with flow, which is kind of what happens. So that's it, my friends. That's today's episode. I just want to thank you for being part of our Have It All family and truly, truly thank you for listening to our podcast. If you'd like to help or give back in any way possible, the best way would be to share this or any other episode that you loved with your family, friends, or colleagues. And if you'd be so great as to just leave us a rating and a comment on either iTunes or Stitcher, whichever you use, that helps us tremendously. It only takes about two to three minutes of your time and would mean the world to us. Finally, I want to let you know that if you want to get even more exclusive content from Guy and I, just head over to satoriprime.com and make sure you join our mailing list. Now, I know what you might be thinking, God, not another mailing list, but I promise you, you'll only get an email or two from us per week and it will always have amazing videos and articles that I'm sure you're going to love, promise. So until next time, you can join our ongoing conversation at the Have It All Facebook group where you can let us know how we're doing and what we can do to improve. Love you all, and we'll see you on the next Have It All podcast. Have an amazing, amazing day, my friends.